Thank you very much, Santos. What, I've, what I'm hearing from the message this morning is the very importance of the Holy Spirit in our lives as believers. Uh, that driver, that power, or the, or the, the power in that car that he was describing for me is the Holy Spirit, the life of Christ dwelling in me. The very importance of the Holy Spirit in our lives cannot be overstated. A believer who is not living without being filled with that life, it's just a matter of time before that car slows down and stalls. Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ in our lives makes the difference. In, in John 14, 15, 16, Jesus refers to that Spirit as, as the Spirit of Truth. He said that at least once in each of those chapters, the Spirit of Truth. And in John 14, he says, it's that spirit of truth in our lives that brings up a remembrance of what Jesus has taught us. In circumstances in life, in, in the dealings of our lives, it's that spirit of truth that brings about a remembrance of the Word of God to strengthen us, to enable us as we live in this world. I want to share a meditation this week uh, uh, with you this morning. How that same spirit has helped me uh, this past week. Jesus referred to the devil in, in, um, in John 8, 44. Describes the devil in different ways in John 8, 44. There he speaks of the devil being a murderer and a liar also. And also in John 8, 44, he says there is no truth in the devil. And I was thinking of that this week. Uh, the devil being a liar is very, it's, it's, that's clear. He tells lies. Jesus says that's his nature. When he lies, he's doing what is, what's natural to him. He's the father of it. And in that John 8, 44 also, he says there's no truth in him. And I was thinking of that this week. Uh, no truth in him, meaning that even when the devil appears and tells you, Something that is factually correct. If he came here today and said today's, uh, I think, December 1st, Sunday, December 1st, which is true, his motive is still deceitful. There's no truth in him, even when he tells something that appears true on the surface. And so, uh, uh, this past week, the Lord was reminding me, I mean, one of, the, one of the areas where the devil comes to tell us lies or presents something that may appear true but deceitful at last is when we go through circumstances, when we're going through difficulties or trials, the devil being the liar that he is, one of the things that he comes to say is, and asks is, why is this happening to you? Are you not a child of God? Have you, have you strayed from God or is... Is God upset with you or not happy with you? Clearly trying to deceive us and to discourage us, but the spirit of truth, that same spirit comes again to encourage and to strengthen us, which is what I felt this week. I was thinking specifically of Jesus on the cross. In Matthew 27, it records when Jesus was on that cross, the people passed by and were making fun of him. And one of the things they said to him was this in Matthew 27? Matthew 27, verse I'll say from verse 39. I'll read from there all the way down. I read this verses this week, and the Lord again, that spirit of truth came and reminded me of what He went through, what the Lord Jesus went through on the cross, and how I must react also like He did. Matthew 27, verse 39. It says, as Jesus hung on that cross, the people passed by and they made fun of him. They were shaking their heads and saying, you would destroy the temple and said you would build it in three days. Save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from that cross. And I thought from that statement there, remember when the devil came to Jesus in Matthew 4, um, Matthew 4 to tempt him, what was the first recorded thing he said to him? If you are the Son of God, turn the stones into bread. And here again, using people, he's still coming to say to the Lord Jesus with the same temptation. 
wanting him to doubt who he was in the Father. If you are the Son of God again, the devil, frankly, is saying here, come down from the cross. Verse 41 says, say the, the chief priests were mocking him also, and the scribes and elders said, he saved himself, he cannot, he saved others, he cannot save himself. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we'll believe him. Verse 43 was what touched me the most. It says he trusted, he, he trusted God, let God deliver him now. If he will have him, for he said, I am the son of God. And that verse 43 is from Psalm 22. You trusted in God, let God come and deliver you now. And I was pondering on this this week. Satan will ask, you're a Christian, you're a follower of Christ, you're doing all that he wants. Why is all of this happening to you? He trusted in God. You've trusted in God. Let God, let's see if God can save you. Well, God can save me and God has saved me. It doesn't matter the circumstances like we were hearing before. This foundation remains true, that God loves me. He cares for me, and I'm not going to judge the truth of God based on what my eyes can see. It just doesn't matter what I'm going through. I trusted in God, and yes, God has will and has delivered me, and he'll continue to deliver me always. So, again, when trials come, never fall into that trap of the devil, that voice that says, such and such is happening to you because God is disappointed or is angry with you. It's not true. Certainly we must search our hearts to see if our consciences are right, our ways, our conduct are right before God. Difficult and, and trials may still come away. And God allows those things to come, not merely because he's, not because he's necessarily because he's angry with us, but there's a reason why he allows events to happen in our lives. And two of those that I want to share with you here, one is in James 1, 2. When trials come, it says in James chapter 1, verse 2, that we should rejoice when these difficult times come. Knowing, verse 3, James 1, 3 says, knowing that the trying of our faith brings about patience. So I believe God was teaching me patience this week. Let and it says here, let patience have its perfect work, that you may be complete, entire, and lacking nothing. So when trials and difficult times come, God is wanting to refine us and teach us patience, the mind and the life of Jesus. We shouldn't complain, but rejoice. It says rejoice when trials come. God helped me that way this week. And it says in 1 Peter 1 also, Concerning our uh, trials and difficulties, First Peter 1, it says in verse 7, that the trying of our faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And so this is what the Lord was saying to me this week. Don't listen to that voice of the devil that trials or difficult times are coming because God is not happy with you. No. God still loves and cares for me. No matter what. And I don't know what any of you in this room might be facing. If you're on the side of the Lord Jesus Christ, it doesn't guarantee that nothing will happen in your life. Things will come. But why will they come? That we may develop more the character of Jesus Christ. And very importantly, and maybe even more importantly, through those challenges, I can rejoice and give thanks to God, no matter what. This is what the, that spirit of truth revealed to me. Jesus on that cross, imagine how he would have felt when people were laughing at him. This is, he calls himself the son of God. Let God save him now. How painful would that have been? But he took it, knowing who he was in the Father. He did not let the the taunting of the people or they're making fun of him, dissuade him or turn him aside from his confidence in who the Father was. So, so in all things, we rejoice and we give thanks to God. Never listen to the voice of the liar, of the devil, the father of lies. God cares for us. He loves us. 
And when it's all said and done, 1 Peter 1, 7 says that our faith may be found to the praise of God and honor of God no matter what. Our God is good. As we heard this morning, the life of Jesus is one you cannot go through without the power of the Spirit. He is the one that brings the remembrance of who God is and helps us to stay strong, that anchor, no matter what. So God is very good, brothers and sisters. We need not be afraid. We can rest in him. It doesn't matter what the devil or the world, or even our mistakes throw at us. If we repent and turn to the Lord, the end is always good. God is very good. Amen. Thank you, brothers. Um, um, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Um, John, uh, St. John 14 and 19. This has uh, been a verse that been on my heart for some time um, um, ever since uh, the Lord showed it to me it feels as if the Lord is speaking to me through his word and John 14 and 19 it says after a little while uh, the world will no longer see me but you will see me because I live you will live also. Uh, and that last, the last portion of that verse is what I believe the Lord has been speaking to, speaking to me and it's been uh, a blessing to me uh, because he said, because I live, you will live also. And as we heard, as we were hearing today about the life of Jesus, uh, the very life of Jesus abiding in us, uh, upholding us and strengthening us uh, like in, um, as we were as we were praying this verse, um, a verse, uh, Psalms fifty, uh, fifty one and twelve. Uh, the life of Jesus is as we heard about the, that indestructible life, and many times when I think about that, um, and try to use my mental capacity to understand that life I cannot there's no way I can because my my mind says that there's no way that there is nothing on this earth or in this life that is like that 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 is sustaining that is eternal that is never waning um, and in my mind I always think about however powerful something is a hurricane or a tornado or a snowstorm or whatever it is, I know in my heart, in my mind that it, that no matter how powerful it is, at some point it's going to dissipate, it's going to wane, it's going to go away. No matter how good a machine is, at some point it's going to break down. Um, and that's not so with this life of Jesus. And a lot of times the enemy wants to come to our mind and says that you you can't be sustained that way. There's no way you can be sustained with that. Or in this life that way, because in our in our natural minds we think that at some point it's gonna go. Uh, that bless me. He said, "Restore to me the joy of that, your salvation, and sustain me with a willing spirit." In the King James version, it says, "Uphold me with your free spirit." Um, and I'm not sure what the Greek word is for that free spirit, but it is generous. Uh, it's overflowing. It's it's more than enough. That God upholds me that way. Uh, Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles, sixteen and nineteen, at least six, sixteen and nine says that God. The eyes of the Lord are, are going to, uh, to and fro 
uh, throughout the, the whole earth. Uh, let me read it correctly. Uh, Second Chronicles. Sixteen and nine for the eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the whole earth that he may strongly support uh, those whose heart is completely his that that life of Jesus that indestructible life of we heard before it strongly supports us it sustains us it's it's what gives us uh, that life of Jesus I believe Colossians three and fourteen three and four says that uh, when Christ who is our life uh, appears, uh, we shall appear with him uh, because he that life, that indestructible life that he's given us, that eternal life is from him, is of him. Because, so when he appears, he is our life. We appear with him because we share the same life he has given me of his life. And it's not a second rate or a third rate life uh, that he's given, but it is the very life of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And uh, in the last verse of First John 2 and 27, um, sometimes the enemy uh, comes, like I said before, comes and says that how can you, how can you uh, stay with the Lord? How can you sustain this life? How can you have a life of, of victory all the time? Um, and you look back over your life and the, 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 the victories that you're experiencing, the enemy comes and says that that you can't sustain that. At some point, you're going to go back. At some point that you're you're going to uh, fall back into that sin or whatever it is. Um, but second, First uh, uh, John two and twenty seven. Says as as for you, the anointing which you have received, the anointing of the Holy Spirit which you have received from Him, from God, from the Lord uh, Jesus, abides in you, and you have no need for anyone to teach you. But as His anointing teaches you about all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you abide in Him. So it's not me abiding. It's not me doing the abiding the bible says in that scripture that the anointing of the holy spirit the holy spirit is going to teach me how to abide in christ that it's not uh i don't think it'll be what they say line upon line precept upon precept writing upon like writing it on a chalkboard or that i understand with my mind i believe it's something that happens in the understanding of my heart and that is my longing that the holy spirit is going to teach me how to abide in Christ, how to, to, to abide in him and allow that life of Jesus Christ to always be manifested in my heart, in my mind. And as he continues to teach me to fall into the ground and die, as I that, let, let the sword of the Spirit fall on me, uh, that I can always experience that true life of Jesus Christ and that destructible life that will never go away, that will never wane. Uh, so I don't have to worry about at, you know, the falling or that um, the enemy coming in or as Santos was saying, those circumstances that come, uh, I forget where it is, but it says that that those who are righteous don't even fear evil tidings because sometimes the enemy will come to you and say that everything is going well, something is going to happen, something is going to knock you off your high horse, uh, so to speak. But if we have that life and that is longer than my heart, that the Holy Spirit is going to teach me how to abide in Christ. He's going to teach my heart and he's going to sustain me and strongly support me as long as I continue to give my heart completely to him.